What's up guys? Welcome back to my shop. We're down here for hopefully the last time and like I said we're going to be working on our kayak cart and actually we're going to be building one from scratch for Chris. What is a mop? Can you can you uh, elaborate on a mop? A mop. <laughs> the shiny goes mop mop mop. It's because he asked me to build one for him as well. So we're going to start with building one from scratch and then I'll show you what we're going to do to our Old Town Predator PDL cart that we've made. Uh, we're basically going to build Chris this exact thing. Um, it's going to be a sit on top with the noodles because his kayak doesn't have any scuppers. So we're just going to make it simple like this. And uh, we're going to build him these tires right here. These are tires that are made for the beach. They have a, a wide surface area. You can deflate them nicely and they're really cheap and easy. Much cheaper than beach wheelies which you can spend about $100 on just the wheels themselves. So. Um, bear with me. We're going to jump mostly through the cart first and then I'll show you in depth how we do the tires. I've taken it from a couple of other YouTubers. We'll get there in a little bit and uh, I hope you guys enjoy this and learn something from this and stay with me. Okay, so let's just get down to some of the things you're going to need for this. First off, you're obviously going to need some PVC. This is one inch schedule 40 PVC uh, and I have two five-foot sections. So you can get a ten-foot section if you're at Home Depot. I think Lowe's sells them in five-foot sections for whatever reason. Um, so you need about ten feet of that. And then for the rest of the hardware, you're going to need plywood. You're going to need to make four ten-inch discs of plywood. So make sure you have enough for that. And um, you're going to want it to be um, about half-inch. Let's go forward. So here we have all the hardware we need. This is 5 8 inch nuts, washers, lock washers for the 5 8 inch rod. It is a 3 foot rod that you need and it needs to be threaded and zinc plated or galvanized if you can find one. And then we have quarter inch, we have 8 quarter inch, 6 inch long bolts with accompanying nuts and washers. And then for the PVC stuff, we have PVC cement. Rain or shine is nice because they're going to be working in, well, it's going to be in the water a lot. And then seven T sections, so T connectors for one inch pipe. And then three caps. You don't really need three, but you'll see why at the end when I'm making third. And then here's your tires. You need <coughs> 8 inch rim inner tube tractor tires and you want them to be specific for these dimensions here so 20 by 8 or 18 by 8 and a half or an 18 by 9 and a half for an 8 inch rim and you need two of those so those are about $23 a pop and then all the PVC stuff is like super cheap all of this is pretty much under 10 to $15 I believe and then um, that's all you need. So here are the basic dimensions of the cart that I have built last year. So we have the cap. In between the cap here and this T piece is an inch and three quarters piece of PVC. Then we have the T. And then here, this was four and a half inches. What I'm going to do for the Old Town Predator PDL is I'm going to make this five inches. So these are going to be symmetrical. And then the rest of the sides are going to also be symmetrical. And then up here, this is going to be four inches right here between the two T pieces and then this bar right here was 10 inches and I'm going to change it to 11 inches to widen that gap and then up here between this T piece and this T piece this is only 3 inches so that's not going to change I'm basically just going to keep everything but this bar and in between here the differences.
boom, done, easy. The last part I kind of edited out or didn't really mention was this piece here. Um, you've seen it on my other kayak cart, and this is what is just kind of a helper. You don't have to have it. Uh, it's a handle. It just kind of you can use it to guide it underneath the kayak. So imagine the axle still being here, and you can just kind of use it to guide it underneath your kayak, so you can get a, a better adjustment rather than lifting up the whole thing. Uh, you can just lift up part of it and then push this underneath instead of having to like you know line it up. So this is it. We're all done with the PVC stuff. Done easy. The hard part really is just making the tire. So uh, let's get to it. Okay. So here comes the fun part. We're gonna be working on our wheels. So for the beach wheels, you need to make your own rims and everything. So we start with pressure treated plywood. Now I just cut up a bunch of pieces here, uh, but this is a two by four slat that I cut into 12 by 12s that I can cut rims out of. Um, and we're gonna cut two, one for each side. And then from there, we're gonna make our um, uh, holes for everything. For you guys who might wanna do this at home and have your own woodworking tools, but don't know how to make a circle, here's how to. I have with me a circle cutting tool. Tool, I made it. Um, take a jigsaw, and then you cut out two pieces of wood, one that fits your jigsaw exactly, like so. So you can place it in there just like that. It sits in there nice, even, not moving left or right. And then you take a second piece that's more like a, an L shape, and then you brat it on, glue it on, however you want to do, and just make sure it sits nice and straight. And then you measure from where the blade is, inches out, and that'll be your radius, not your diameter, your radius. So I'm gonna cut a 10 inch circle. I'm gonna go to here, this is five inches, that'll give me a five inch radius. And then I'm going to just, you know, let it guide itself. I'm gonna put a nail through there. I drilled eighth inch holes all the way down on the ruler. And uh, just put a nail in there and then just push forward and it's just gonna drill that circle. So uh, follow along and uh, you'll see how I cut these circles. Okay, so I have this clamped down. Uh, there's empty space underneath, so I'm not drilling into the bench. And um, I'm just gonna drill quarter inch holes on each corner of the box, all the way through both rims. And then in the center, I'm going to do a one inch hole, and that'll be it for drilling until we're almost ready to go, which is when we're gonna drill our uh, two and a half inch hole for the, what do you call it? The Tires are almost there. I right? see the rims are just a little loose right now. That's because we don't have any stuffing inside to kind of expand and keep the tire in place. So here's where you have two options. Uh, feel free to give me a third if you like. Uh, this is what I did with my old one. My old one, if you didn't see, a little messy, but in this two and a half inch hole I have here for the valve is that great stuff or the gap filler stuff, you know, just a spray can of that. Uh, you can use that to fill this up. 
Um, another thing you can do, which I saw John Sims do on YouTube, uh, he used insulator, purple insulator, to fill the gaps on the inside. Now, I didn't want to do that because that was more of a pain in the butt. And you also have the option of drilling the valve hole now or later. Uh, I'm going to do it later just because uh, when that stuff expands, it's just going to kind of, it bursts out of that hole like, like I had on the other tire there. So this will keep it from bursting out too much. And I want to kind of keep these tires a little more clean than mine were. Uh, just a little trial and error from last time. So I'm going to fill these up and uh, we'll come back in a little bit once they're all set and ready to go. Okay. We are painted and ready to put everything together and take it out. Uh, so the last steps are to put the axle through, put the nuts on, the wheels, and the nuts back on top of the wheels, and then put noodles here. So let's do the easy one first. I'm going to put noodles up top. You can just go get a pool noodle anywhere, you know. Um, just make sure that the center can fit onto it. If it doesn't fit, and if it's too small, just drill it out. Uh, you'll need an inch and a quarter diameter to fit these onto there. And then, if you want, you can use glue. Um, it'll fit on pretty nicely, though. It's not really going to go anywhere, as you can see. Um, so, yeah, just do that, and then I'll speed it up for the axle and everything else, and we'll take it out. Okay, let's talk about this real quick. The scupper cart from the get-co I thought was a good idea, but after fidgeting with the kayak... I realized that it is more of a pain than the noodle one I had was, so... What we're going to do is I'm just going to stick with the noodle one because it doesn't make sense. If you're on your own trying to mess with this thing, this thing's heavy, man. It's trying, it's like hard. you got to get these, you got to get these things in through the scuppers and then you got to fit them into the, the cart itself. So it doesn't make any sense for me to do it. If you're going out with other guys and you have help, maybe it makes sense. But for me, on my own, um, I'm not going to fuss with this. I like just picking up the kayak putting the cart underneath with the noodles and just going and spreading this out another inch is going to at least help um, the thing stabilize a little more and I had two pieces that weren't glued so we're going to just glue this together as is with the noodles and go from there. load this up all you gotta do is pick up the rear end and then push this underneath with the nice handlebar that we made I like to use a strap to keep the cart in place in case it slips out for whatever reason. Boom, that's it. 